Microtik PPOE and Hotspot over VXLAN. In our video, Microtik PPOE over VXLAN, so we have this topology wherein we have the main router and the side routers, and we have the access concentrator as the PPOE server. So we have our OSPF multi area. Area 0, Area 1, Area 2 as our underlay. And we have our VXLAN, VTEPS as our overlay. So in order for our Layer 2 PPOE service to be tunneled from AC to Site 1 and Site 2. And in order for our PPOE clients that are connected to the sites to connect and have a PPPOE service and in turn get an IP address and go to the internet. So we are here now in our AC router. So using Microtik Router OS 7.6 table. And I would like to point out some key differences in this deployment which will have the hotspot service. In our Microtik PPOE over VXLAN video tutorial, if you go to interfaces and VLAN, from that video you'll notice you'll have the VLAN 100. But for this tutorial, you will see that there is no VLAN or layer 3 VLAN for this particular router. Now if you go to VXLAN, don't mind first the VXLAN 200. So from that video, we are using VXLAN 100 for our PPPoE. So this time, instead of it riding on a VLAN interface, we direct it to a physical interface. So the rest of the settings remains the same. So from here, you'll notice that you have the VXLAN 200. So this VXLAN is for our hotspot service. So you'll see key difference on the MAC address, the name of course, the VNI is now 200. The group will be 200 and it's still riding on to the same physical interface, Ether1. Additionally, after configuring our VXLAN interfaces, so you will go to VTEPS. So we have our VXLAN 100 for our PPOE. This goes to Site1 and Site2. So now we have VXLAN 200 for Site1 and Site2 for hotspot service. And then we go to the bridge configuration. So this time we have two bridges. So I rename this one to be specific. So VXLAN 100 for PPPoE and bridge VLAN VXLAN 200 for hotspot. So under the bridge ports, so VXLAN 100 is part of the bridge VXLAN 100. The VXLAN 200 interface is part of a bridge VXLAN 200 bridge. So if you go to the PPOE server configuration, so PPP and PPPOE servers, you'll notice that the PPPOE service name is still on actually the same bridge, although renamed bridge VXLAN 100. As for the hotspot service, so nothing fancy, just run the hotspot wizard. So if you go to IP and hotspot, so just run the hotspot setup here. So you have the hotspot service on the bridge VXLAN 200. It has its corresponding hotspot pool. So if you go quickly to hotspot pool, you'll notice this particular range of IP addresses for our hotspot. It has its profile and just the default configuration via the hotspot setup. Of course, the names are just renamed for clarity, the pool, the service, the profile, and you have the users here. So we have for site one, HS1, and the site two, HS2 for hotspot two user. So to emphasize again, so in our hotspot servers, we are using the bridge VXLAN 200. For our PPPoE server or service, we are using bridge VXLAN 100. So that is all that was changed on the AC. So again, we have additional bridge and the bridge port. 
in the interfaces in the VXLAN. So we don't have VLAN anymore. So VXLAN, we have additional VXLAN to cater for our hotspot service. Of course, different values in terms of VNI number and group number. As for our site routers, so we are here now in site number one. Of course, additionally, we will have our VXLAN interface. So if we go to interfaces, VXLAN, you'll have the VXLAN 200. So you'll have the MAC address. You'll have the VNI, which is 200 now. The group will be 239.255.255, that's 200 now. It's still riding on Ether1 and the same port numbers. So basically the same configuration, just different name, just different MAC address, just different VNI and different group number. Then once you have this additional VXLAN 200 interface, so if you go to bridge, so you'll have the same bridge VXLAN that is configured. But under the ports, you'll have now the additional VXLAN 200. So you still have the VXLAN 100 and the physical port going to the client one router or the switch. So similarly, on our site 2 router, so if you go to interfaces, you'll now have the additional VXLAN 200. So the VXLAN name is different. You have the MAC address. This is different. You have the different VNI 200 and the group number will be 239-255-255-200. And then you have the bridge. So you still have the same bridge VXLAN and loopback bridges. So under the ports, you just add additionally the VXLAN 200 on the bridge VXLAN. So if you go to our client one router, which is the PPPoE client, so if you run the command interface PPPoE client print, you'll see that the interface is connected and it's running. And if you take a look at IP address print, it got an IP address. And if you do basic connectivity test, so ping www.google.com. And you'll notice that it is resolved to an IP address and therefore we have an internet connection. So in our client 2 router, so if you go to the interface list, our PPPoE client interface is running. It got an IP address and if we do a basic connectivity test, so microtik.com. So we are able to resolve microtech.com and we are able to go to the internet. So our PPPoE clients on both sites, PPPoE 1 and PPPoE 2, client 1 and client 2 are confirmed still working and be able to go to the internet. So what about our hotspot user or hotspot computer? So this hotspot is connected to port number 2 of the same switch and we still have the same single uplink going to our site 1 router. So it is still the same on site 2. So we have hotspot user or computer number 2. So we are here in our hotspot computer. So as you notice, we get an IP from the DHCP server. And if you take a look closely at the IP, so we are getting from the hotspot pool, which is 10.5.50. something. Our default gateway on our DHCP server is our hotspot server, 10.5.50.1. So once we obtain an IP address, so we open a browser and we type in the hotspot DNS name, which is inquirinity.hotspot. And we are prompted to type in the hotspot user and password. So in our case, we type HS1 in the password and click connect. So you are logged in. You'll get this IP address. The status is connected. So we'll open the command prompt and do our basic connectivity test, www.microtik.com. And yes, we are able to resolve. So for simplicity, I just transfer the HS1 cable from site 1 to site 2 since I don't want to spin up more virtual machines. So the virtual machine that is now connected on site number 2 still is able to get an IP address from our DHCP server and we are able to go to the hotspot DNS name 
This time we will use the second hotspot user, HS2, to connect. And yes, we are logged in and the status is connected. So we'll do another ping test. So this time we will use a different website or site. And yes, we are able to resolve www.google.com. So just a quick addition or I want to show you something before we end this tutorial. So in our AC router or the one that is doing the hotspot service or the hotspot server, you'll notice under IP firewall N80, there is no masquerade rule for our hotspot service. And then for our sites, for example, we are in site number two. Under the VXLAN, remember that we need to have two VTEPs, so two virtual tunnel endpoints, one going to the PPPoE service and the one going to the hotspot service.